Hello, Legal Eagles. My name is Zubair, and I am joining you from Oxford. I had the Global Institute of Law, Oxford. And today we would be joined by Professor Beta Pollock, who would talk about universalism, cultural relativism, and women's rights. This is quite an important topic, as we'll discover very soon. I have known Professor Pollock for the past several years. She is uh, a budding intellectual and a scholar, and I look forward to a very insightful and very interactive session today. So over to you, Professor Pollock. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, good, good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, I would want to, uh, I would like to invite me uh, here today. Um, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great honor. Um, I'm uh, as an assistant and also I'm, I'm, I'm about uh, in my PhD. I was actually uh, I was I was trying to find an answer if if women rights in Pakistan are uh, compatible with uh, international law standards. Uh, somewhere in in the back of my head, uh, I thought I already knew the answer, and I was research. I uh, start noticing you no know, uh, other things that not everything is so black and. I started noticing that uh, this, this, I would say, imperfections in, in, in the so-called international universal human rights standards. Uh, it might not be like, big revelation for many, but what is important to say that, that I'm from Poland, a um, country which is located right in the heart of, of Europe, country which is part of the European Union, a uh, country which is signatory to all human rights conventions, but at the same time, the current policy and uh, here I really want to distinguish between this what we see in public TV and what politicians are saying and between this what, what, what average people are or average people not. But the current uh, government rhetoric is, is to me, I, I, in, in general, in by, by our current government, and really heartbreaking to this topic for, for, for another discussion, or maybe even uh, What is important for today's discussion, uh, in this country, in the middle of Europe, um, very important country, uh, we are living in this Okay, <laughs> in, in, in the internet. I was uh, trying to say that, you know, in, in, in this, uh, in this um, very, very important country, uh, we, 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 we are living in, in, in this kind of bubble um, where we don't really realize that there are other people that um, it is not, I believe it's not only problem of Poland, uh, uh, maybe, you know, anthropologists, for example, uh, they, they are more aware of the, the cultural diversity, etc. But I'm a lawyer and uh, during my five years LLM course, uh, I think there was nothing what uh, could uh, raise my concerns uh, 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 about the concept of uh, universalism. Uh, we did not study nothing about, you know, different approaches to the universal conception of human rights. Um, and I also noticed that uh, uh, when we open uh, any mainstream human rights or public international law handbook or uh, 
sorry, light is back. <laughs> um, or, uh, or any, for example, UN website uh, dedicated to, to this topic, uh, we will see uh, uh, the same right. Uh, so, of course, we, we, we always say that the, the source of human rights is a human dignity, and then we say in specific situation and according to due process. For example, the right to liberty can be restricted if a person is found guilty of a crime by a court of law. Uh, interrelated, indivisible and interdependent means that uh, um, this is insufficient to respect some human rights and not others. In uh, practice, the violation of one right will often uh, affect the, 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 the risk of, of uh, other uh, rights or, or several other rights. Uh, all human rights should therefore be seen uh, as, as, as uh, dignity. Uh, with with, with, uh, with the, 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 the characteristic, the last characteristic, which says that the human rights are universal. I mean, everyone knows that uh, that it means that they are applied equally and without uh, uh, discrimination to all people. Um, so, as we know, uh, an absolute cornerstone of, of human rights uh, regime is Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And uh, we see that uh, established set of standards applicable to all persons without any discrimination. Uh, but right after beginning, during the discussion uh, on the declaration, a lot of this, we can say, uh, came out. So, for example, we have Article 16 of uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which, which states that men and women of uh, to race, nationality or religion have the right to marry and to found a family. They are entitled to equal rights as to marriage, during marriage and uh, at its dissolution. Uh, so, as we see, the Article 16 does uh, include uh, uh, directly, does not include directly right to divorce. Uh, this is not just a random construction um, that uh, we add the, 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 the specific uh, uh, line that women and men are entitled to equal rights during marriage and at its uh, dissolution instead of just you know adding uh, uh, that women and men have equal rights to divorce uh, there was a very intense debate um, um, if the shall be included but finally under the pressure from in article 16. at the same time muslim countries were trying to oppose uh, this construction of article 16 uh, by in indicating Taking that uh, this article would not be in accordance with their uh, religious beliefs. Um, so, um, but of course, they, they, they were trying to oppose because of the different reason, um, especially um, the, the, the concerns were that without any limitation uh, due to religion. Uh, but we can say that Christian political groups um, got what they wanted, while uh, Muslim countries, uh, uh, when which had uh, constant, especially when it's coming to equal rights without any limitation due to religion, um, but this was not taken into consideration. Um, Saudi Arabia argued that the, the declaration violated Islamic law and uh, was criticizing the declaration for failing to take into consideration the cultural and religious context of non-Western countries. Uh, Saudi delegate argue also that the model of Islamic uh, marriage in centuries fulfill its function and there is no need of uh, modifying it uh, under the Western pressure. Uh, so this discussion led to critique um, concepts of human rights. Uh, um, today we would uh, like to discuss more cultural relativism and since it we, will, we will discuss this from the woman rights perspective. I uh, the easiest explanation would be that uh, feminists look at human rights through a gender lens and uh, cultural relativists uh, 
use the, the, the cultural, pers cultural perspective. Uh, feminist critique of uh, human rights assumes that uh, universal rights uh, is a concept created by men and therefore ignores woman interest. Uh, it also assumes that we should take into account between men and women in order to reform human rights, uh, not to strive for equality uh, at all costs. Uh, later uh persons uh especially like where uh, most cultural tra traditions are preserved uh as we know human rights uh, regulates uh, relation between men and the states uh, but woman oppression is uh, largely situated in a private context. Uh, in response to this claim, Sido uh, Yeah, I, I see, I think, uh, again, the connection broke. Um, so uh, when I finished, uh, I, I, what, what I was saying is, uh, it was that, uh, that the, the, the later in the framework of the, of the, of the feminist critique, uh, the, 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 the CEDAW convention was developed and um, the, 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 the CEDAW extended the definition of, of discrimination in Article 1. Uh, with the, the cultural relativism, the central point of, 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 of this theory is that there are no cross-border legal or moral norms that make a particular practice acceptable or unacceptable. Uh, relativists argue that uh, human rights standards differ from culture to culture, and what might be considered as a violation of human rights in one society might be lawful in another. Uh, we have, of course, different forms of, of cultural relativism. Uh, we have this more radical or less ra radical. Uh, the more uh, radical rejects uh, human rights as a, a foreign policy of uh, Western states, uh, as an instrument of uh, neocolonialism, and the less radical reject only specific rights or reject the specific uh, 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 interpretation of, of those rights. Um, Islamic countries are, are, are very often show as, um, I would say, this, this role model of cultural relativism or shown as uh, um, maybe better example of uh, uh, non-compatibility of universal human rights standards. Uh, in Islamic countries, there are a number of cultural and legal tradition uh, which are derived uh, directly from, from the sources of, of Islamic law and which raise uh, this serious concern from the universal point of view. So uh, discrimination against women or freedom of religion is pointed uh, out as, uh, as, uh, as this uh, uh, incompatibility with uh, universal human rights standards. Uh, but the criticism of, of universal human rights regime is, uh, is heard not only in Muslim countries, or not only Muslim scholars uh, um, pointed out. For example, Eva Brems, uh, she is a well-known human rights uh, expert and authority in this field. Uh, she adds uh, that uh, for historical reasons, as well as the world's power system, international human rights, both in theory and in practice, are strongly, as a result, uh, the different needs and values of non-Western countries are less well represented in the field of uh, human rights, which in consequences undermines that the, 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 the thesis about the universality of human rights. Um, um, second example would be uh, Kenyan professor Mutua. He dedicated a lot of work uh, um, in the issue of universalism versus uh, cultural relativism. 
Uh, he says that uh, human rights standards is a continuing attempt to universalize and essentially European human rights in the course of Western Crusades. Uh, he also adds that uh, this uh, falls within the historical continuum of the Eurocentric colonial project in which actors are uh, cast into superiors and subordinate position. Precisely because of this cultural and historical context, the human rights movement's basic claim of universality is undermined. Um, so Professor Mutua calls the project of universalism European project. Uh, what is important to say that the European Court of Human Rights uh, um, took several times a, a very strong stance on, on Islam and its uh, compatibility with European human rights standards. We can actually say that the European uh, Court of Human Rights persistently holds the view that Sharia law is inconsistent with the values of democracy, rule of law, and it's contrary to, to fundamental human rights. Um, now we should ask what are those European values? Uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, right now in, in, in Europe, the Muslim population is up around five to six percent. Um, the, the Europe which we remember, or want to remember, which was built on this uh, on, on pure Christian or Judeo-Christian Judeo values is no more. We have right now a uh, Europe full of diversity. Uh, so we have countries, for example, like Czech Republic, where 72 percent of, of, of Czech uh, nationals identified themselves as a atheist. Uh, we have France, for example, where some people want to uh, be religious, they want to express their religion, uh, but the country make it difficult for them. Uh, we have, for example, Malta, where till just a few years ago, uh, just, just few years ago uh, divorce was uh, legalized uh, in, in Malta. So uh, before uh, get, getting divorced in Malta was, uh, was, was, was not possible. Uh, in October um, 2020, in Poland, uh, a constitutional tribunal uh, ruled that uh, women will be forced to carry a pregnancy to full term and uh, uh, give birth even if the fetus has uh, severe uh, genetic defects and with a terminal uh, prognosis after birth. Uh, the government is clear here that the next step is to ban abortion in case of rape. Um, this is not a secret uh, that the Catholic Church is, is strongly involved in this decision. Uh, uh, Poland uh, remains one of the most uh, religious countries in, in Europe, where 95% of, of, of the people uh, declaring themselves as, as a Catholics, 92% um, uh, people as, as a believers, and more than 50% uh, regularly attend the church and uh, practicing the religion. Uh, um, country is the reason why the, the, the church claim a right and, and claim to have a power to, to influence decision uh, sensitive and extremely uh, important for women matter and uh, without consulting uh, those decisions with women um, and just to make it clear we are not discussing here the the, the, the right to abortion or uh, I would say right to unlimited abortion uh, because this is a very controversial topic and um, uh, this is a very controversial matter and uh, we can find many arguments uh, pro and contra abortion and uh, both of these arguments, of course, make sense. Um, what happened in Poland, it's, it's, the, the situation is totally different. Um, what, what happened in Poland is that the country uh, decided that woman has to carry a baby for nine months, uh, the baby who will not be able to survive after birth, um, the baby who will die right after birth and will suffer in pain, the mother will suffer in pain, the father will suffer in pain, uh, um, the, the, the whole family will uh, suffer in pain. Um, the next step of Catholic Church under the pretext of uh, religious all, or order will be to ban abortion if pregnancy is a result of rape. 
Uh, unfortunately, in, in, in many uh, countries, uh, especially Christian majority, uh, Christian majority countries in, in Latin America, under the pretext of religion, abortion is totally prohibited. Uh, and, and there are situations we can, we can uh, always find this, this uh, kind of cases in, in, in newspapers that, uh, uh, that women, for example, who miscarriage their pregnancies, uh, pregnancies uh, are being held responsible for it and uh, are being co convicted for committing the, the crime of abortion. Um, so now when we think about religion, about the violation of, women rights, etc., then very often automatically we, 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 we tend to think that it's, it's Islam. But here we have a country in the center of Europe, as I said, and uh, women are arbitrarily deprived the, their rights in, in, in name of religion. Um, Equal rights to inheritance uh, is, is uh, an underlying issue uh, in the uh, 1993, during the World uh, Conference on Human Rights, which was held in Vienna, inheritance, uh, um, uh, in, inheritance was, was also discussed as well. Uh, demanded from the Muslim countries to, to take legal steps and ensure equality of women and men in, in inheritance. Um, in of the Muslim community is invoke the principle or substantive instead of uh, formal equality in society is based um, and taking into consideration different roles of women and men in the society. Uh, it is fair to distribute the, the inheritance uh, mass in, in, in this way. Um, many Muslim states argue that uh, men and women in Islam might not have uh, uh, equal rights, uh, complementary rights and obligation. Uh, so as we know, husband, uh, husbands are obliged to, to, to give uh, haq meher, maintain wife and family. Uh, and at the same time, women have uh, uh, no obligation to financially in the, 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 the house running cost. Um, because of this fact, uh, it is believed that men should have more financial rights. In this case, in the form of in, in inheritance. this kind of construction of laws to be discriminatory, but rather see this as a uh, um, complementary obligation between the spouses. Um, so now there is uh, uh, another problem in case, for example, uh, of Pakistan, where statistics shows that 97% uh, 97 of women are deprived of uh, the, the, the inheritance of, of land or agricultural land. So um, maybe instead of striving for, for this uh, formal equality, uh, we have to, I mean, for sure, we have to work harder on, on implementation of, of, of these rights. Um, the demand for like quick, instant changes of law, uh, especially in Islamic countries, uh, the, the changes uh, uh, which, uh, mm, the, 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 the changes that we try to do to fit the, the Muslim countries' law to universal uh, universal standards uh, um, seems um, to be not the best uh, idea. Uh, we cannot just uh, change law um, like this. The, 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 the formation of law is, is, is a process. And uh, uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, uh, the whole concept of women's rights empowerment of women, uh, gender equality is a quite new concept. Uh, even uh, quite developed countries uh, still facing many issues. Uh, we, we, we still trying to figure it out what uh, this, this gender equality really means. Um, and here, you know, we touching this never ending debate uh, what law is, uh, when law is valid, and um, does the person have a legal obligation 
to obey unjust or immoral law uh, is the law which is in contradiction to the religion is uh, immoral law and uh, without getting into the details we have to think uh, that um, if the i mean if, if the law which will be considered as an unjust law will be even valid uh, we can change the law, uh, but we cannot uh, really change what, what people think and what people believe. Uh, similarly, the right to uh, Hak Meher or uh, Dower was uh, uh, initially widely criticized. Uh, initially, the, the, the CEDAW committee was uh, very uh, negative toward the, the, the Muslim uh, Dower, uh, saying that the presence of uh, the custom of providing a dowry indicated that women were still to some degree regarded as a commodity. Uh, our CEDAW uh, committee also noticed that uh, um, um, in, in one of the, their concluding uh, observation, uh, I think it was to Tunisia, that uh, the continu continuation of the practice um, gave the impression that the bride was uh, bought and could be managed like a chattel. Um, in general recommendation number 21 and 29, uh, CEDOC, um, uh states also that uh, a woman's right to choose a spouse and enter freely into marriage is a central to her life and to her dignity and equality as a human being. And uh, uh, examination of states' parties reports disclose that there are countries which, on the base custom, religious belief, or the ethnic origins of uh, particular groups of people, permit forced marriages or remarriage. Uh, permit forced marriages or remarriages. Other countries allow a woman marriage to be arranged for payment, which refers to transaction in which cash, goods, or livestock are given to the bride or her family by the groom or his family. Or a similar payment is made by the bride to her family, to the groom or his family. Uh, so it's, um, um, it's uh, the, the article 20, uh, the, the um, general recommendation 21 and 29, we cannot really say that this is, uh, uh, this is uh, direct uh, criticism of, uh, of uh, uh, Muslim Dower, um, because the um, CEDAW um, committee um, mostly, um, mostly criticized the, 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 the whole a uh, concept of, uh, um, you know, um, uh, uh, marriage as a consequence of, of, of math. And uh, in, um, in, in, in Islam, the, 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 the dower, uh, it's, it's opposite, right? So the, the dower is being given to, to, to woman um, because of the marriage, not uh, in, in other situation. But in general, there is not there is not much about the the the, the dower in in CEDO recommendation in in CEDO reports. Um, I didn't do that extensive uh, research also about uh, um, the dower itself. Uh, but uh, what is uh, important, uh, I, I think that there is. Uh, there is uh, completely no understanding of this concept. Um, very often, while uh, you know, reading and uh, researching, I was trying to reach to uh, very different sources. So um, I was trying to find an authors uh, who are coming from different backgrounds. And um, quite often, uh, non-Muslim authors uh, confuse the, the dower and dowry. Uh, for me, for example, it uh, took also like uh, quite a lot of time uh, to realize that there are two different uh, institutions. And um, so it was, uh, again, complete uh, revelation for me. And, um, the, and as I say, the, the, there is not much about uh, uh, Dower itself and its compatibility or, or incompatibility uh, with those universal international human rights standards. Um, but uh, what, what, on the other hand, it's never, it's nowhere mentioned that this is a very important tool in uh, women empowerment in Muslim countries. Uh, it is a actually a crucial institution for achievement, this substantive equality uh, in, in this uh, legal, I would say, non-Western non setting. 
uh, uh, the map with uh, not equal right to inheritance, with uh, husband right to unilateral divorce, with the obligation of uh, maintenance, uh, um, wife maintenance by husband. Uh, it's, it's creating this kind of uh, harmonious whole and uh, analyzing of uh, those uh, aspects, those institutions uh, individually without uh, reference to this, to this whole mechanism might uh, give a false, false statement about the position of, of woman in, in, in Muslim family law, in position of woman in, 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 Muslim, in Muslim woman in family in general. Um, in, in case of um, woman rights and cultural relativism, uh, so as I said already, like first of all, that this gender equality is uh, is a quite new concept, and we we still trying to figure it out. What does it really mean? Um, and as I try to, to to show today by using this uh, the, the, this examples with uh, with the Islamic inheritance and uh, dower, uh, cultural relativism can be applicable, um, can be easily applicable, but it's, it, it cannot be an excuse for discrimination against women. Uh, gender equality and uh, prohibition of the discrimination, uh, the basis of sex is a, a fundamental principles in, in, in both cultures, in, in Western and in Islamic. Uh, here we can indicate, uh, for example, that the whole work uh, of, of Islamic feminists like Ziba Mir Hosseini, Fatima Mernisi, uh, Asma Barlas, who done a really, really great work on, on proving, uh, but actually not proving, but uh, reminding that women are fully respected and protected in, in Islam. Uh, but, you know, even if, if, if this, this whole concept of Islamic feminism, uh, the, the, the Islamic uh, feminist claims, first of all, that Islam has, be, has been misused by uh, powerful sources uh, to justify her practice which are often against Islam, uh, which are often against Islam's uh, central ideas. Um, so even if uh, for, for, for some the, the, the whole concept of Islamic and feminist and it might be too controversial or maybe um, too Western, uh, but like let's open any, any other book about women rights in Islam. It doesn't matter if, if this book is uh, written by uh, uh, mentioned uh, feminists or for example by scholars from I would say uh, more close-minded uh, background. Uh, even books you know which were written years ago before the, the concept of gender equality and uh, women rights was, was fully developed Everywhere at the beginning, um, it is written that Islam brought so many rights to women that other European women uh, had to wait. The, 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 for those rights, other European women had to wait, you know, till 19th century or even sometimes till uh, 21st century, um, as, as, as we uh, indicate the example of, of uh, um, Malta when in uh, 2017 the divorce was uh, become legal. Um, so it all means that the concept of uh, gender equality, non-discrimination on the basis of sex, uh, the, the, the concept of uh, woman empowerment is, is universal and uh, fundamental concept. Uh, but maybe uh, paths uh, to achieving this equality uh, m might be might be different. Um, so. Uh, Adopting the, the attitude of, of, of cultural relativism uh, is, is adopting a tolerant and respectful attitude towards uh, other cultures. Um, so we always, or, or, or maybe uh, very often, we see the, the clash between culture and rights. And uh, uh, we, we tend to think that uh, culture undermines rights and another hand uh, um, application of, of human rights destroying the culture uh, and today i was trying to to explain that it's it's uh, that it's not a case or it's not always uh, a case um, i also wanted to point out that uh, in, in in case if there is any clash uh, it's it's not only problem of, of uh, third world countries um, so if we have to highlight that if, if the, the concept 
of them, it's, uh, it, it's very important that if the concept of uh, cultural relativism is, is right and valid theory, it is uh, uh, precisely women that should be asked uh, if they agree to sacrifice their rights within the framework provided by culture or religion, uh, not uh, uh, politicians, scholars or, or other religious leaders should uh, have uh, the last word in this matter. So as uh, uh, rightly pointed by uh, Fernando Tessin, uh, if one women in any country are discriminated, it is not enough to say that uh, tradition requires uh, such discrimination. Uh, the only uh, defense for depriving uh, women certain rights uh, must be consistent with the principle of autonomy, which says that every discriminated woman agrees uh, to give up uh, her rights and accept this kind of uh, uh, construction of law. Um, but looking at, uh, you know, uh, looking at women's rights movement, not only in Pakistan, but throughout the world, uh, one, one, one can quickly guess, one can quickly conclude that the, 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 the empowerment of women and men is, is, is universal through, throughout the world. And uh, uh, we, can, we can easily see what uh, the, the demands of, of Polish or, or Pakistani women. Uh, we can clearly see that uh, what, what those women want. Uh, we see that uh, Pakistani women, they, they don't want to be subject to violence. Uh, I guess maybe unrestricted polygamy might not be seen as a fair concept. And uh, on the other hand, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure about this, um, uh, but I think, for example, uh, legalization or inter of uh, interfaith uh, marriages in the sense of uh, um, legalization marriages between Muslim women and uh, non-Muslim men uh, might, might not be top priority of Pakistani women. Um, but uh, on the other hand, we have to also keep in mind here the, 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 the prohibition of, of discrimination uh, against uh, basis on, on the religion. So this might not be the best um, example. Uh, what we can see with, 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 uh, with the Polish example is that uh, uh, Polish women do not want to serve as a living coffin for their children. And uh, of course, some women might never decide for abortion and this is their right to, and this is okay. Uh, but the, the, the Catholic church, uh, uh, the, the, the Catholic priests who, who, uh, uh, who, who do not know the problem uh, should not be the last who uh, decide for them. Um, so I think um, um, that's it for today. Um, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Vita. That was uh, that was amazing. Like uh, how you were navigating between these uh, extremely. Um, complicated notions and concepts which are packed as um, contradictory to each other. So on the one hand, we have universalism and then we have cultural relativism. So universalism is Western and cultural re relativism uh, is Eastern. And very interestingly, very few people actually know. So Poland, it provides a very, very different uh, perspective. So lots of people are engaged and um, uh, are making, uh, making uh, uh, comments. So I'll, I'll, I'll be reading out their, their, their questions uh, to you. Um, I just want to ask you one question, um, which is related to, 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 to whatever you have been talking about. So this whole notion that Western world says equality is universal. And then here comes Muslim scholars and say, no, 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 we have complementarity. But I am here really thinking that how equality and, and complementarity are mutually exclusive. Why women cannot be equal and complementarity, com complement complementary to men. So how fair it is to pose them as mutually exclusive as a as, as type of binary, binaries that you have either equality or you have complementarity and you cannot have both at the same time. Yes, I mean, the, 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 that's, I, I, would, I would point out here for, for the, the, the uh, cultural feminists who are actually 
actually, uh, you know, uh, indicating that, uh, uh, I mean, there, there are differences, you know, that there, there are differences between uh, men and women. There are, you know, biological, uh, psychological, the, 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 there, is, the, there is many differences. So really striving for, for this, this formal equality. And I, I think right now it's, uh, it's, uh, the, it's quite established that, uh, you know, uh, um, striving for this, this formal equality and trying to, to make everyone equal uh, doesn't really make sense, and um, I would I would rather go into this uh, uh, co 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 com complementary uh, rights and and uh, and obligation. And I mean, even even if uh, the even even if we don't want, I mean, really agree that uh, uh, that that this is the case. I mean, I think the the argument about you know the the the, the biological differences between uh, men and women, um, it, it, it would be the best argument. So, yeah, thank you. True, I think this is, uh, even when uh, universalists argue about, about equality, it does not mean that uh, they somehow downplay or don't recognize biological, psychological or differences between men and, and, and women. But here, the project is much more uh, nuanced or intricate. So, Beta, you have mentioned uh, this jurisprudential notion, and I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really um, uh, enjoying uh, and was really fascinated by your by your 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 talk. So, where you bring the whole issue of uh, obedience to immoral laws, right? So, if a certain law is immoral, do we still have obligation to obey? the law. Now, connected to, do, to, to this question, that is the reverse of it, right? So what if a particular interpretation of religion is considered as not very palatable to contemporary situation? The whole debate in the US about uh, pro-life or pro-choice. But we know that religion is something which is very personal to people. So I don't know how faithful you are and you cannot gauge, you don't have a parameter or you don't have a barometer or, 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 or a machine that may actually gauge our religion or our faith, right? So maybe I, I, I want you to, mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to just maybe make a comment about this, that yes, there is a debate about uh, obedience to immoral laws, but what about obedience to certain interpretations of religious texts that not everyone buys, right? So maybe from, from, from Polish context or maybe uh, based on your research on Pakistan, you, uh, you would like to comment uh, on this point. So that's that's what I was actually trying to 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 say that uh, you know like for example with with this all uh, with, with with this in this all development sector right now you know this uh, this whole concept of, of gender analysis for example it's 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 very very popular and actually uh, you know gender analysis is one of the one of the, the basic tool um, and uh, uh, y yes there the, the, are you know different interpretation there are maybe different interpretation which uh, which uh, are, are are not the the mainstream interpretation of law which not not everyone agrees uh with them um i could i mean i i i, I could maybe show us example you know this uh, um this uh, um, uh the 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 the, the, the Quranic verset, which which allows you know men. I mean, this is like the, the this is a very um, simple example, and you know, well discussed. I think from from every uh, every perspective, if men is uh, allowed to use violence, and I mean, if 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 we would uh, uh, look at the interpretation of 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 this. Um, most of the most of the scholars i mean th there are few few uh, different opinions but but the, the the mainstream says that he he's not allowed so 
how we can right now, you know, what, what if, if we can, you know, what, what kind of flow can we, uh, 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 can we create? If we can create, you know, with some law, which will be, uh, which, uh, which will be against, for example, religion. So can we, you know, create the law which says that, you know, um, you know, like this all uh, anti-violence woman laws would be uh, un-Islamic. I, I think no. And as I said, you know, at the end that, uh, uh, that, you know, if, if we want to create any law, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's, if, if, if it's the law which concerns women or, you know, law which concerns uh, the, the population, I mean, we, we really need to, I mean, of course, we, we have referenda, right, where, where, where people are deciding if they want, for example, to access to European Union or no, and then we are, you know, asking people, uh, but I think that this, 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 this kind of maybe uh, gender analysis uh, should be, uh, uh, we, we should start using the gender analysis in, 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 in the, the, the legislation process. I mean, the, 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 easiest, the easiest answer would be, you know, that we should just have uh, uh, m m more more uh, uh, women who are uh, involved in, in politics because you know of course that uh, um, as uh, um, you know Shad Begum said during uh, our last discussion that you know if, if there is no um, if uh, if there are no women in, in politics it means that you know no one is fighting for you so um, I I think we should uh, we should we should go in 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 this direction that you know not really uh think what is uh, um uh, what is against or you know what is in accordance with the religion but we just should uh see what what most most people what 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 are they follow what they want so the same you know case with uh, with with the with the, with the abortion in the, the 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 this certain abortion with the certain situation in poland so there was a, a law which you know uh prohibits abortion in poland since since decades and no one really you know questioned this some sometimes you know in in, in debate the, the, the there were you know uh, people who say that you know the abortion should be unlimited in poland but i would say we we, we live more or less in in this kind of stage of of, of acceptance that you know if uh, if uh, if uh, the, the 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 fetus uh, has uh, uh, several some some genetic defects with with the terminal prognosis after birth when uh, the, the 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 pregnancy is uh, is a um, result of rape uh, when the pregnancy is is dangerous for woman and woman might have uh, might, might suffer with very uh, serious complication if she will decide to to give birth this was the, 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 the this were the three situations where abortion was uh, was uh, legal in, in Poland and no one really questioned this and uh, I I, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I cannot say for all Polish citizens, but I think it's, it, it was mostly, you know, uh, it was in accordance with their religious belief that, you know, the, uh, as Catholic says, the church says that, you know, um, uh, abortion is equal to, uh, you know, killing someone. That's what, 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 what is in, in very, very uh, um, short, uh, that's what uh, Catholic uh, Church thinks. But in this case, you know, when, uh, when the, the Constitutional Tribunal uh, ruled that the uh, woman cannot, uh, uh, you know, uh, go, uh, cannot access abortion in this kind of situation, then, you know, the, the Polish woman, they, they, they went like extremely, extremely angry. And uh, um, there was like thousands, um, you know, thousands of, of, of women on, on the street. They were protesting for, the, 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 for, for two, three months. I mean, they're pro still protesting because this, this decision is uh, still there. Um, so um, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, like religion is one. But we also have to take into consideration what does it mean for, 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 for the people? So I think I explained enough. Thank you very much, uh, Beta. I think um, that was very, very interesting. Uh, another uh, important point that seemed to be that you seem to be raising in your uh, in your uh, in your discussion is this whole issue of political power. So where women seem to be just pawns. So whether the whole issue is about colonialism and imperialism and its connection with universalism, 
or it's um, uh, about uh, pro-life or pro-choice uh, debate about um, abortion. So may I may I ask you to, to just comment um, on this, that the whole issue of power and patriarchy and colonialism and imperialism, how this is very much connected. And it's very interesting that uh, these whole cultural, intellectual uh, wars, which are being fought on women's body, they are actually linked with power. And here power is more amongst men, whether they are politicians or they are clergy. And you have rightly mentioned that uh, this whole issue of uh, universalism or cul uh, cultural relativism, it's not a third world problem. And you, you, you rightly gave uh, examples of Poland and also the jurisprudence which is coming uh, from from uh, European courts of human uh, human uh, rights. So may I ask you to to comment on this? Yes, yes. I mean, I I think uh, I I think I mean um, I I wouldn't really uh, want to suggest anything, but I think that, that there is a point that you know that the whole concept of of human rights as as a whole. Uh, is um, is is a little bit Western concept in in the sense that um, I mean of course you know during the the the, the, um, the during the discussion on the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights that, that you know ev ev uh, many many countries you know many Muslim countries participate. Um, it's it's also uh, very often is pointed that you know like in, in case for example Pakistan uh, I mean maybe not not the right people participate maybe you know people who already had you know this kind of uh, 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 Western mind I would say that uh, uh, you know they didn't really bring the 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 the, the, the real Pakistani values uh, um, but uh, what uh, what what I think is. Uh, Yes, is that that maybe the whole concept of uh, uh, but uh, the, the the whole concept of of, of woman rights. I mean, it's that the, there is no. I mean, of course, the, the, there are situations where uh, you know woman rights are being uh, discriminated more in uh, uh, you know um, in in uh, the third world countries, for example. Um, but on, on on the other hand, as I said, you know, we we, we still in in Europe we still facing uh, many many issues with uh, uh, with uh, uh, situation of, of you know of, of women with, uh, for example, the uh, you know domestic violence. Uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not even I mean for sure that there are statistics, but as we say that you know the the, the discrimination against women is mostly. Uh, uh, mostly happening in, in, in the four walls. So uh, the, the, the statistic won't be, I think, really accurate. But um, I, I'm not sure if we compare, you know, uh, statistic from, uh, you know, some, if we would have them for, from, from, from some Polish, you know, uh, village at, at the east, uh, east, of, east of Poland, you know, with, uh, with, with Pakistan, if the, if the, the level of, of, of uh, uh, domestic uh, violence won't be uh, won't be similar. Um, yes, I think I answered. Yes, oh, I think question, you have rightly. I, I got a little bit lost, to be honest. With you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, it's, it's just very 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 common for for us uh, as as professors um, to get lost, right? So our um, uh, unmindfulness is is uh, proverbial. Uh, so people are asking lots of questions. We have one question from Muhammad Ahmed Salar, who says that uh, this whole notion of uh, universalism is basically essentializing. So would you like to comment on this? Uh, do you think that uh, this whole debate is basically essentializing uh, certain certain uh, notions and certain concepts? Um, uh, sorry, I, I, I lost you uh, so, could you could you repeat the, the the end of the question because yeah so the question is that um, this whole debate uh, between universalism and uh, cultural relativism is basically essentializing uh, it, it just revolves around certain features so those are assumed to be fixed 
Um, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not really sure how I should answer for this question because, um, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I can't really get the, the, the question, to be honest with you. Okay, so I'll try to, to, to answer this question for, for mm -hmm. Salar. Yeah. Um, so I think Salar, you're, uh, you have rightly pointed out, yes, it just seems that it's, um, it's very um, uh, essentialistic uh, debate uh, where we certain notions are assumed to be fixed, but we know that um, things are not fixed, rather um, they are much more fluid. And uh, within these divides, as Beta had rightly mentioned that cultural relativism and cultural uh, universalism, uh, they have then diversity within it. So we have extremist or, or, or of, uh, universalism, and then we have relative, uh, moderate um, uh, universalism. So there, uh, you're absolutely right. I think uh, uh, whatever you uh, you have mentioned. So Peter, I think we are just uh, approaching end of our our, our session, um, and mm -hmm. here I want to ask you the question that what is it that uh, that made you interested? Uh, in this topic, so why why is it that uh, that you're you're exploring this this topic? Uh, so so what what made you choose this? Um, so I, I I I came first time to Pakistan in 2013, uh, and um, I I don't know I I think I just uh, kind of fall in love in this country. Uh, and I decided to stay a little bit longer. It was the time when I was doing my, uh, uh, when I was uh, thinking about my uh, uh, master thesis topic. So I decided to choose uh, uh, the topic on, the, 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 I, I wrote my thesis on implementing CEDO in, in Pakistan. And uh, uh, I, I think, you know, for, for, my, uh, for, for one of my supervisor, uh, this 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 topic uh, this topic came out to be like so interesting and at, at the end there are only a uh, few people who, who who are actually writing something about uh, about the pa Pakistan and you know from from this academic perspective um, there are maybe two or, or, or three people, and uh, I think nobody is uh, no, 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 nobody is writing in Polish with, um, when when in Polish about uh, um, so uh, that he offered me to to, to um, work on my PhD in, in similar uh, uh, topics. So that's, uh, that's why we, uh, we, we discuss a lot. And uh, I mean, the, 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 the woman rights in Pakistan topic was, was already uh, something which, which uh, uh, at this time I thought I know. So it was, uh, it was um, and, and something that was uh, like extremely interesting for me. Uh, so I think that's, um, mm, I'm, I'm a Polish, but I live uh, in Pakistan and, and, you know, promote as much as in Polish. Uh, so I think uh, uh, that's it. There was some uh, uh, connection break a little bit, but I, I, I hope you heard me. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Vita. That was very interesting, very personal uh, touch or personal um, account to, 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 to your, your research. And that always uh, help uh, to, to contextualize. Uh, with this, uh, I thank you, uh, uh, Professor Pollock, for joining us. It has been a fascinating uh, and very insightful session. And we hope that we shall have many more sessions. Um, and I wish you have a nice evening. And thank you very much, uh, our viewers, for your engaged um, uh, interactions with us. If you have any further questions, feel, feel free to either write to uh, uh, Professor uh, Pollock or to myself. 
And uh, the whole purpose of our Global Institute of Law Oxford is to provide you a platform where you can in interact with, with each other and um, we can have um, scholarly discussion and discourses and debates and engagements uh, on different uh, uh, issues. In coming days and weeks, we shall be bringing you more scholars from all around the world. And please also stay tuned to our activities. We have announced the Global Young Scholars Essay Writing Competition. We will select 25 young scholars and then provide them intensive writing uh, uh, skills workshop. And then out of those uh, uh, 25 uh, uh, young writers, we will choose five as editors of our uh, upcoming global blog, uh, Law and Policy Watch uh, blog. And we also have plans to publish um, uh, journals and uh, books. So uh, there is a lot more uh, uh, that, that, that we have planned uh, uh, on our forum of uh, Global Institute of Law. Uh, if you visit our website, we have set up five uh, research centers. So in each of these uh, research centers, uh, state-of-the-art research would be produced. And what we want to do is that while our researchers are producing their research, we will not make you wait for that because uh, quality research uh, production takes years and sometimes even decades. So if you're our young um, legal legal, and you have just entered into your university, one professor might have started writing a research paper and that paper will only be completed when your law degree is completed in five years. Or if some scholar has uh, uh, his or her eyes on writing a book, that scholar may be working right now and that book would be produced when you have done your undergrad, your masters, and then your own PhD and then that scholar will, will publish that book. So sometimes a good scholarly manuscript take a decade uh, in, in production. So our plan is that we will bring to you the 